Got a fun little throwback for you here, the 2022 Santa Cruz Masters Cup on Gatekeeper Media. I'm Andrew Fish, joined by Nick Anson. Hey Fish, how you doing today? I'm great. I'm really excited to see uh, tournament coverage that you know we've been holding on to a little bit, uh, and as we get into the 2023 season, time to release it. Yeah, this is a good course to be featured at too as well. Very old course and has a lot of history at it. For sure. A lot of uh, national tour events this year, and I guess in 2022, it's a Pro Tour Silver event featuring Kevin Jones, Jeremy Colling, Drew Gibson, and Garrett Gerthy on this round one feature card. Yeah, we've got a stacked field actually as well for this Pro Tour event as the uh, OTB is just one week away and easy stop for a lot of these players yeah definitely uh you know as the tour kind of coalesces everyone into the same same place at the same time uh you're definitely seeing elite fields stacking off every single week yeah and we'll see one here as we have hole one is a 315 feet it's a little bit uphill tough birdie to get with that low ceiling but you can get up there yeah for sure you're kind of picking a gap here and throwing a distance driver almost certainly to combat that low ceiling and the high floor of the terraced logs. Kevin, unfortunately, turning his over, as you see, still getting skip up that hill. So not really sure how far he progressed. Jeremy, big germ coaling. One of the few players who's going to look at this and see a forehand. I think it's an interesting line. I do see the gap there that he's looking at over on the left. Just kidding. Going with this turnover. Yeah, I assume that's like the intent is to try to play for the full flex. Get the maximum flight out of the shot. I was thinking he might Heiser flip one on that left side there. At any rate, reasonably effective. Uh, probably Parsville, though. Drew going to take the backhand. Drew, plenty of experience at this course, being a California boy. And smokes a Heiser flip up there. <laughs> That was the height that you want to then get the skip up there, but as you see, getting chopped down about halfway. Absolutely. And Garrett Gerthy, we know him well. Plenty of style in the clothing, plenty of power in the shot. And got to find one of those terrace walls. Neat line from Kevin to try to throw a little nose-up air bounce. Drew's going to do about the same, but both of those are going to leave some work to be desired. Ooh. Jerem trying to ring one up early here with the sidearm approach. <laughs> and Garrett going to the Sonic. A little layup here. Good way to give it a half bid, though, with those lower speed discs. Absolutely. You're accessing the glide, you know, in the early stage of the flight, but not really risking going past. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh and God. I couldn't agree with I'm Big Jerm Moore. That was <laughs> a wild one to watch. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a putt be like that aggressively out and flop in. Yeah, that was <laughs> that it was as close to on edge as you can get. So it looks like Drew's going to rack up a four. Everybody else going to walk away with a three. And uh, everything out here is going to be called a par three, but many, many bonus holes to work with. We will see some bonus holes out here. But also some of those bonus holes I think you can get. Yeah. Here we are at hole two. It's an uphill 270 foot shot. Most right hand backhand players are gonna be throwing just a stall with some kind of overstable fairway. 
Again, you're going uphill. Looks like Kevin's going grenade, which really cuts the corner. Interesting line there, um, but as you can see, Jerem going with the Thummer. Mm -hmm. The over-the-top route is very open, and if you have it, the best shot. That'll tap down to maybe circle two, but pretty much an unrunnable putt, right? Yeah, it drops down behind there significantly as soon as you get past the basket. Yep. Garrett going to take the more traditional backhand route. He's pushing it a little bit long, perhaps, where he'd like to be. He'll be in that layup zone as well. And Drew looking backhand as well. Drew also pushing to that top back side of the fairway, getting hung up there, that last tree that you really want to go right in front of. Mm-hmm. Kevin, the jump putt layup. We're going to see probably several layups here. Good choices. And uh, Nick, tell us about the ground play at De La. The disc can get away from you in quite a hurry here. Plenty of spots where one side of the green runs off significantly. So if you miss and hit chains, that one's set. But a lot of times it can roll and... When it does, you're going to be probably outside the circle. For sure. And uh, since this hasn't been a Pro Tour event for a couple years, uh, some of our newer viewers might not recognize the term day lod. Yep. And I would say we'll see probably one to two of those, even at the pro level here. This yeah, day. you don't wish it on anybody, but uh, you know, eventually your disc is just going to find a way to not stay where you put it. On the hole three here, 354 feet. It is downhill, probably about 10 to 15 feet, I would say. Big sidearm is the play if you have it, or you can throw a nice straight shot right at it. Yeah. Kevin plays a very nice power shot over the left side. Absolutely based. As you can see around that basket there, though, that we just saw, there's quite a bit of roots as well. So depending on your shot, they can also cause you a lot of grief out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, De La, one of the most played courses. Santa Cruz loves it. The locals will rave about it. Uh, but a consequence of that is the real hard-packed dirt and exposed roots. A little surprising to see Garrett also go to the forehand, as good as he is with a backhand mid. But well done. And nicely done by Drew also. I think that forehand opens up the... It opens up the most opportunity to get to the basket, but the backhand can work if you penetrate through one of the gaps nicely. Yeah, a few blockers there with those early trees, but also a very viable option as we have just a low putt there. Big germ from about the same spot. And nice little elevator down catch. Band chains and in. Drew's going to connect for his birdie. And we're going to see almost certainly three birdies on this card, assuming Kevin can take care of simple business. All right, here we are, hole number four. 390 feet. This is a very tricky hole, actually. As you can see, you go a little uphill and you come back downhill. When you're going down to the green, it's 
going to be a very low ceiling. You'll see rollers or flex shots out around the tree on the right. Very hard to get the two on this one. For sure. We see Kevin going to uh, that comfortable hyzer flip shape he likes. And you kind of don't know what you're going to see uh, until you walk up there. Because this is, you know, it's uphill, it's blind, and then there's a lot of things that can happen once your disc gets to the ground. Yeah, as it looked like Germ was trying to throw a flex sidearm there that maybe just started to cut roll. Yeah, it, I'm not sure if it was a if it was a purposeful roller or that flex. As you can see, Drew threw a pretty good shot there, but he's still going to be about 50 short of the basket. And Garrett's going to be first to throw his second shot. He kind of got no good reaction. And this is a tricky, a very tricky approach. As there's downslope to the right, trees all in front of the basket, and then that hard pan again. And Jerm going to get caught up in that low ceiling and... Find himself about 90, it looks like. And tough on the speed control there. He's going to have another low ceiling putt for four. These greens out here are not forgiving. If you miss your line or if you throw it on the wrong angle, it's going to tell you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I think that's an element that sometimes we need on the pro tour, like make pros think about what they're doing and not be able to just, you know, run every 50 footer. It's a good, that's a good theory. I think it's one we could um, pretty easily explore. I mean, putting baskets on mounds. Do you think the raised basket does the trick? Not really. Um, because the ground play, I, I guess what I'm looking for is the ground play risk and a raised basket. There are ways you can attack it or lay up that are very routine. Um, unless it's, you know, kind of windy conditions or there is something mitigating the layup around the green. about halfway down the fairway it starts to go downhill players are going to be throwing a flat shot that needs to really just stay straight and not fade too much at the end yeah what do you think the disc choice is here nick you're going to see a lot of mid ranges uh maybe even some putters out of some of these guys kevin a little bit of a flip up kind of drifting right this can work Checks up. It's going to be nice. Sure. So backside of the green, uphill 30-footer. Yeah, still nice, but a little deep. Yeah. I I mean, we'll take that all day. Absolutely. Steady diet of circles edge putts uh, is a pretty good recipe for success. Drew similar shape, but never has it right of the basket. And those trees there are the trouble when you're fading out. If you get stuck in those, unlikely to have a putt. Garrett sees some shapes he likes and gets a circle's edge putt 
reward for it. Maybe closer. And Coling. He's not really known for this kind of shot. Certainly with the forehand, but backhand mid play uh, is something Germ kind of goes in and out of his game, I think. Good speed control with the putter. And Drew with a big putt from inside those trees there. It looks like he got deep enough to be on the back side of them, but still a not an easy putt from in there. Yeah, that's a really good get. And difficult to get enough momentum to putt uphill, low ceiling, without being able to really use your legs at all. And Kevin going to grab a birdie as well. Taking him to two under par and leading our card here. So you played this tournament, Nick. Was there a score you felt like you had in mind for, you know, what was acceptable, good, great? Yeah, I would say wanting to be anywhere from two to four and great being six to ten. Sure. Just because these holes are gettable, but you also can run into trouble easy, even though you might be throwing good shots. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You see, Coling does a little bit of mimicry of how that disc got out the right side. And maybe some missed opportunities there. All right, here we are at hole six, 348 feet. This one is just a little bit downhill with OB along the left-hand side there and on the back side of the green. You're going to see players throw little skip shots, some little floaty putters down there. But this one is a fast green. That's leaking left very early. And gets a decent rollout. I think that could make the angle for Kevin's inevitable layup significantly easier than the left side. Something I... Wow. Oh. Yeah. Ooh, staying just in bounds there as we can see the line. Maybe a little obstruction from that chain. All of these guys are so powerful with their shots. Um, but as we saw Drew and now Garrett, they're all so good at being able to slow down these shots so that they have a lot of spin but no speed on them. Yeah, it's fun to watch the players tone down their shots from their normal, basically big arms that were big arm courses that we're seeing more and more on the Pro Tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, and this is a totally different course than what you mentioned as the next one coming up at the OTB Open which is a, a hybrid ball golf disc golf course nicely done layup by Jeremy oh Kevin rolled all the way back to the other side of the fairway yeah that disc went on a journey so he's giving a jump putt as a layup there, probably just inside the circle. Floaty run from Garrett. And Drew with the last chance for the card. Love that he knew it. When Drew's putting is on, he is such a dangerous thrower that he's always going to be in contention. Yeah, watch out. Very solid from Kevin. Good par save. He's had a couple good scrambles here on the front already. So if For sure. you can do that at this course and scramble when you're off the fairway, off the tee, and then just trickle in your twos, you're going to do a good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh it's it's huge not to put yourself in a position where you have to make those putts for par. You you know, you'd like your circles edge putts for 
for birdie and your drop-ins for par. <laughs> Big Jerem taking his time here for this one. I like I like the way that he's kind of adapted his routine to be look away, step up, make it. Kind of taking his mind out of the equation. Just nice and simple. Here at hole 7, 215 feet. It's just a slight left to right moving shot. You can see the green uh, runs off to the right there. OB on the left, but shouldn't come into play. And pretty good shape, a lot of speed and a good backstop. Talked about kind of playing that down tempo shot on the previous hole. At 215, it's even more critical. Some of these players might even think of this as like an upshot that they're throwing for some holes for sure other, other days. A great shot by Garrett there. I think that was a Sonic. It looked like it. It flew like it. And Coling with a really good shape kind of hits the last guardian before getting to the green. You saw Kevin's body language walking off the tee. This is a very challenging spot because your landing zone is blind. You still have a complicated shape. Well executed. And there's that scramble I was talking about again here. Oh, and Jerem thought he had it halfway <laughs> there. It looks so good. Very solid. Drew in for a turkey. Back to her now at 300 par. And Garrett with the easiest birdie. He'll, he's going to get all weekend, I reckon. Got to love a slam dunk. For sure. You get the chance. All right, here we are at hole eight. 369 feet. This one is dead straight. Woods on either side, as you can see here, so you really don't want to get off it. Players are going to be throwing slower fairways, I would say, here. Maybe a mid-range. Yeah, initial hyzer flip out of the hand, right? Yep. And Drew inches from perfection. Kind of hugs the right side a little too much. Kicks off to the left. Garrett with the opposite problem. You see that uh, that first, maybe not first tree, but the tree on the left that projects furthest out into the fairway is the one that really forces that hyzer flip shape. Yeah, and this one from Kevin is looking really good. Probably going to be right at circle's edge with that. Mm -hmm. And this is a line over here. Is this something you've seen, Nick? No. You can Never play, would I even thought of that. Yeah, you can play the distance driver forehand to try to drift left of the fairway and then fade back in. Wow, that's incredible. A little bit of a tough approach here, but nicely done. Picks Drew a gap, it sticks it. Easy. Garrett here with his third. And not quite the control we expect out of the Sonic, but he'll have a putt. And Germ, same on the other side. And Kevin getting our lone birdie on the card with that <laughs> jumper. Jump Hunt Jones does it again. And he continues to just claw through this front nine here, getting his jump to three down. And Garrett seemed to maybe a little rushed with the upper body on that putt. Leaves it high. And is going to have to settle for a double. We're on to hole number nine. 550 feet. 
R3. Players are going to throw to about in here most drives and then have an upshot. A difficult par 3. The 2 is pretty unlikely. You could <laughs> get there with a roller, some things like that, but most players are trying to just get their 3 and get out of here on this one. Yeah, this it's a super old school California thing to call a hole like this a par 3. Kev playing the Heiser flip to skip. And that is your ideal shot. Getting the skip to then get into that area as it's pretty low ceiling. Mm -hmm. Can't really get an air shot through there. You've got to skip right before it and hope that you get that, you know, 60 or so foot skip. Yeah, but even that's going to leave him with probably a little forehand approach into the green. Yeah, he's still 100, maybe 120 out. Yep. Drew far too straight. Uh, makes his his second very challenging. Holding appropriate width needs no nope, no good skip there if you're going to get cut down. And Garrett with a rip. Oh, he's going to get chopped down early yep. as well. I, you called it talking about the the skip shot kind of being the play because the air shot can't work. Drew getting up there. Hell of a chance for three. So as you can see, really with these trees, it's got that low ceiling effect to a lot of these upshots. And it's a good mix for the holes. Having it open and then, you know, you have to control your height once you get close to the green. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's 550, but distance isn't everything. Kevin with an interesting choice of going with the grenade there. Yeah, everybody else is hoping they don't hit something. He kind of is. Right, <laughs> right. And Drew getting bogey there. Much shorter than I thought on his original approach. Mm -hmm. Basically had another short approach there to get to the green. Likely park cleanups for the rest of our card. And it appears that Kevin able to avoid the two meter rule. Uh, not by much though. That one, yeah, we're definitely <laughs> close. All right, so as we wrap up our front nine here we see a uh, couple guys under a couple guys over um, as you said it doesn't take much under par to feel pretty good about your round um, again with this elite field uh, Albert Tom putting together a very solid one out in front and then a, a cluster in the four and three range excited for this back nine here and we'll see if we get any more day laws uh, let's hope not uh, Nick, appreciate you being here, uh, and we appreciate our only Zool Patreon supporters, as well as uh, the other folks who like, share, subscribe Gatekeeper Media's videos. All right, y'all. We'll see you on the back nine. <laughs>